Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I hope y'all are doing good today. Now listen, I've been meaning to do this book review for quite some time, so I appreciate your patience. Shout out to the subby who actually recommended I review this book. The book we're going to be reviewing is called Miss Me With That by Rachel Lindsay. Now I'm about halfway done with the book, so there's going to be two parts in this series. This is part one and we'll be discussing the first half of the book. So far, I am enjoying her book. While I don't agree with everything that she says because I'm hashtag all, I appreciate the hard lessons that she went through that she is sharing with us in an effort for us to learn from them and for us to want better for ourselves and how she is pointing out the fact that she lacked self-esteem and what she went through to get self-esteem and to want better for herself and her hopes that her audience will take those lessons and apply it to their own life. For the most part, there is a lot that we can learn from and coming from somebody like Rachel Lindsay, who is successful, who didn't let hyenas stop her from keeping her eyes on the prize when it comes to her career. And then ultimately, after going through those hard lessons, learning from them, she did keep her options open and appears to now be in a very healthy relationship with her non-black man, I feel like, you know, I'm open. I'm open to learn something from this. And I think that her book does a good job in teaching those lessons. Now, to start out, Rachel Lindsay talks about how she had a good upbringing. Her parents are well off. They're still married to this day. And she talks about how they wanted to raise her to be a well-rounded person, especially a black woman. So to do this, what they did is they put her in a primarily white private school so she could learn how to conduct herself amongst the dominant culture. And then so that she has a sense of community, they put her in sports. She ran track and she did so in the black community. Now to balance the two out, they put her in the organization called Jack and Jill. The best way that I can explain it based off of what she says in her book, Jack and Jill is an organization well off black people put their children in in an effort to teach them ethics and such. So Jack and Jill, in my opinion, was supposed to balance out the black culture and the dominant culture. She talks about how she has all sisters and what it was like growing up with all sisters and how different they were despite the fact that they were raised by the same parents under the same roof. She talks about what it was like dating hyenas and as I read these stories, I was thinking, okay, these are all the same people. That's why we say hashtag all in divestment, right? <laughs> so she talks about her high school boyfriend who dumped her because she wouldn't give her virginity up to him during prom night and he wanted a sure thing. So he dumped her and went with somebody else who was gonna give him some. She talked about her college boyfriend, the educated lame who appeared to be such a gentleman, but then he cheated on her. And one of the things that I hated was how she gave her virginity to this guy because in her mind this gentleman this educated lame if he could cheat on her there are no such thing as good men so she talks about giving her virginity up to this guy and how it didn't feel good and she even talks about another hyena later on in life how she experienced a level of dv with this hyena when he was drinking and how she was quick to excuse his behavior so that he wouldn't face the repercussions of having to deal with the the police. Typical, right? She talk about all those things and boy, when I tell y'all black women are aligned when it comes to the hyenas they have to deal with, they are aligned and Rachel Lindsay further reiterates that when she talks about the different relationships that she's had with hyenas because she's had a few and she talks about them all and I have met this hyena and we all have met this hyena. Hyenas are like one big blob, they're all the same. And we've all dated them and met them. Now I wanna talk about the different elements that Rachel Lindsay touches on in her book that I think we all can relate to. First of all, the whole elitist black versus the impoverished black, right? To me, there's no difference. Blackistan gonna blackistan. But she talks about how she didn't fit in with either group. 
When she would go run track, she would be told that she speaks like a white girl because she's well-spoken. And then she wouldn't fit in with the elitist blacks because, you know, they are extra. They just do too much. They just can't be normal. They just think that they're better than everybody, right? There is no in-between. There is no balance. Even though her parents try to balance things out by having her go to primarily white school, Jack and Jill, black sports, right? There is no balance amongst Blackistan, right? <laughs> there just isn't. And so she doesn't definitely touches on how she doesn't fit in as the spunky, well-driven, independent black woman. She doesn't fit in with any of these groups. But for me, there's no surprise there. Black women should just divest and keep their options open. You're never going to fit in with Blackistan. They don't like you. She talks about her success. She didn't let Blackistan, hyenas, or any of that take her away ultimately. There were times where she almost allowed herself to get distracted and ultimately failed, but she was able to come back up and be successful. So I do like that she didn't let Blackistan or hyenas stop her. And she does touch on that. She talks about the coming of age. Again, the whole privileged Black versus the impoverished Black and everything in between. The diversity amongst the Black community. She talks about the spectrum of evil when it comes to Black men. When she talks about her different relationships and the different experiences that she has. All dust all dust but it certainly highlighted the spectrum of evil that i i haven't spoken about on this channel for a while but i have touched on the spectrum of evil amongst hyenas several times on this channel and she definitely touches on that in her book she talks about mammies and their two faces how um with one of her boyfriends she met his mammy mother and at first she adored her. She adored Rachel. She loved everything about her. But then when her hyena son became dusty, she turned her back on her. Typical, right? She talks about the dangers of speaking life into men who hit their rock bottom. Let's face it, ladies. Hyenas are always going to be rock bottom. Whether they're impoverished or whether they're successful, they're always going to hit rock bottom. They're always going to make women single mothers. She definitely touches on this in her book as well. She talks about the dangers of entertaining weak and secure hyenas because no matter how much feminine energy she brought to the table, she could never stop an insecure man from being violent. Whether it was towards her or other hyenas, she could never get these hyenas out of their rut. Even if she did be, did build a hyena to a somewhat stabilized position, she would always be exhausted at the end of it. Does that sound familiar, ladies? You spend all this time putting your energy into a hyena and then when he's done sucking the life out of you, you feel exhausted. And then he goes on to go and bring his dust in another relationship. Luckily, she found Copper, her rescue dog, that pretty much forced her into routine and balance. She admits that though Copper is a rescue dog, he saved her from herself. And we all know that dogs bring more value than hyenas ever will the dog protected her he growled at dusty hyenas she credits copper for saving her from depression and potentially falling for mr wrong i also love how copper accepts her new husband her current husband the non-black dude that she married but if owning copper is what it took for her to want better for herself then so be it I'm happy she is where she is now. The only thing I do criticize is that she has kept a lot of black men as friends. Like I said, hashtag all in this space. There is no need to interact with a hyena unless you absolutely have to. It seems aside from her personal relationship, she has made these professional relationships with work from hyenas. So she's not fully divested. There are elements of divestment she does touch on though. For example, putting herself first and never losing sight of her long-term goal, which is to be an attorney and to be successful. Though she has had some pretty doggone close calls, she has been successful in achieving her goals. I think as she got older, she understood where she stands with hyenas, and that is evident in her current marriage and circle. So far, that's where I'm at with this book. 
in the chapter that I stopped, she introduces accepting typical positions of uh, what it means to be a black woman. For example, a black woman is strong. That's where I'm at right now. Like I said, I'm really enjoying this book. It's a good read. It's very entertaining. There is a lot of tea. Highly recommend. Definitely apply the things that matter to your life and ignore the things you disagree. But overall, highly recommend. All right, that's all I got for now. What are y'all's thoughts? Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see y'all in the next one. Love y'all. Bye.